Hello, welcome to the Autoimmune Disease Machine Learning Challenge. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ora Ashenberg, and I am a Director of Computational Biology at the Broad Institute, where I work at the interface of machine learning, biology, and human disease. We have put together these three introductory lectures to get you up to speed on autoimmune disease and how we hope to use machine learning to better understand and treat these complex diseases. Since the completion of the Human Genome Project in 2023, the life sciences have been in an ongoing revolution where our ability to measure and perturb biological systems in both health and disease has been radically transformed. However, these new technologies generate complex, high-dimensional, multimodal data that requires advances in machine learning in order to distill biological meaning and translate to clinical impact. And that's where you will have a chance to really make a difference. So let's get started. So first, let me give you an overview of the crash course. So there are three lectures. The first is going to be the biology of autoimmune disease. And then the second lecture will be the technologies that we use to profile autoimmune disease. And then the final lecture will be on the data that we've assembled for this competition and the three crunches that you're going to be working on over the course of the competition. So let's start with the biology of autoimmune disease. So this lecture is divided into four parts. First, we'll discuss what is autoimmune disease. Then we'll talk about autoimmune disease in our gut and how a pathologist can make a diagnosis of this type of disease. And finally, we'll talk about how certain autoimmune diseases can increase your chances of catching cancer. So first, let's talk about what is autoimmune disease. To understand this, we need a basic understanding of our immune systems. So our immune systems operate throughout our bodies to protect us against real threats, such as cancer, viral infections, bacteria. And when your immune system encounters these threats, it initiates inflammation. And the classic symptoms of inflammation are swelling, pain, redness. Um, we're all familiar with this. And this triggers a very big immune response that ultimately uh, works to recognize the threat, eliminate the threat, and promote tissue repair. So that's what we want to happen in a healthy immune response. Now, in contrast, in autoimmune disease, you get these same forces acting but they're getting activated in the absence of any real threat. So you start to get inflammation in your colon or your kidney or your brain, and you get this big immune response that leads to tissue damage. And this causes diseases such as lupus, uh, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, and ulcerative colitis, which is the focus of this competition. And you might be asking, well, why would your immune system respond in this way? Well, First of all, all of us have different uh, variants in our genes in our body, and these variants give us a different predisposition to certain diseases. So somebody might be at greater risk for ulcerative colitis, and somebody else might be at greater risk for lupus. But it's not the genes alone that determine whether you get an autoimmune disease, it's also the interactions with our environment. So a change in diet, or air pollution, or toxins in the environment can increase your chances of autoimmune disease. In addition, the microbes living in our gut or different uh, viral infections, for instance. So those are some of the reasons people can get um, autoimmune disease. Now, very concerningly, the prevalence of autoimmune disease is increasing around the world. And this comes at huge cost to patients and public health. So here we're looking at a graph of different autoimmune diseases and their prevalence over time. And you can see that all these diseases have been going up over the last few decades. And in particular, um, inflammatory bowel disease, which is what you'll be working on in this competition, has really gone up over the last 20 or 30 years. 